This is Research Like a Pro, episode 317, Transcribing Document Images with ChatGPT and Claude. Welcome to Research Like a Pro, a genealogy podcast about taking your research to the next level, hosted by Nicole Dyer and Diana Elder, accredited genealogist professional. Diana and Nicole are the mother-daughter team at FamilyLocket.com and the authors of Research Like a Pro, a genealogist guide. With Robin Worthland, they also co-authored the companion volume, Research Like a Pro with DNA. Join Diana and Nicole as they discuss how to stay organized, make progress in their research, and solve difficult cases. Let's go! Today's episode is sponsored by newspapers.com. Hello everyone, welcome to Research Like a Pro, and hi mom! Hi Nicole, how are you doing today? I'm really good, I've been experimenting with the new chat GPT 4.0 and just learning more about it, it's been interesting. I've been experimenting with that as well. In fact, we were talking before we started recording that I have been working on my titles for Roots Tech presentation proposals and using the chatbot to help me come up with some better titles because sometimes my mind goes blank when thinking of better words. (laughs) So I was using the new chat GPT 4.0 which is the major upgrade. But then after about 15 or 16 interactions, it sent me back to the 3.5 version. So that was kind of fun just to test the limits and see what happened. Right. Yeah. You can do so much now with the free version of chat GPT, Um, but there are limits to how many messages you can send in a short time. (laughs) Right. It told me it would let me back in, in about three hours. So, you know, (laughs) I'd been really desperate. I could have waited. But I just continued with the lesser version, which was totally fine for what I was doing. Well, our announcements for today, we have our Airtable guides available on the website. Airtable Research Logs for Genealogy, Quick Reference Second Edition, and Tracking DNA Matches matches with Airtable, the Quick Reference Guide. So if you've been thinking about Airtable, wanting to try something new, these guides are really fabulous for getting you started. And then we're excited for our next Research Like a Pro webinar, which will be held on Tuesday, August 20th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. And this will be presented by Steve Little. The title is Who's Eli's Daddy? A Civil War Era Open Secret, a DNA Case Study. So this sounds like a fascinating case. It's about James Eli Bolly Bauer, who was born in 1863 in Ashe County, North Carolina during the Civil War, Oral family history suggests Bali's father was a Confederate soldier who, while on leave in 1862, allegedly returned home not to his wife and children, but to another woman, Margaret Riley Bauer. Nine months later, Bali Bauer was born, and shortly after, the soldier, William McMillan, was dead. This case study aims to determine if documentary evidence and DNA analysis, both autosomal and white DNA, can confirm or refute the family legend that William McMillan is the father of Bolly Bauer, born to Margaret Riley Bauer. Well, that sounds so fascinating, and this is a tricky time period during the Civil War in North Carolina. So the topics will be North Carolina Civil War, non-paternity event, oral family history, white DNA, autosomal DNA analysis, pedigree collapse, endogamy, multiple relationships, visualization techniques, and genetic genealogy. Wow, we're going to learn so much from Steve about how he tackled this huge project. Our next Research Like a Pro study group begins in August 28th, and the early bird registration has ended, but there are still some spots available likely, so be sure you sign up for that if you're interested. And we invite you to submit an application for being a peer group leader where you get a complimentary registration. So you might be a candidate for a peer group leader if you have gone through the course or the study group and written a report and feel like you can help a small group to follow the process. And we invite you to join our newsletter to learn what we're doing and to get coupons for any specials that we have going on. All right, well, let's get to our topic today. Today, we are excited to talk all about artificial intelligence tools and transcribing document images with ChatGPT and Claude. So artificial intelligence tools have made huge strides in transcribing handwritten text in recent years. 
and we were all so excited at Roots Tech when Family Search announced their full text search, and that is using AI to transcribe deed and probate images and more. And I know when I was working on my past project, it was so nice to have that easily find deeds for my John C. Klein and then have the transcription right there. And it was a pretty good transcription. I was impressed with that. Well, today in this podcast, we are going to share how to use ChatGPT and Claude to upload images in either the JPEG or PNG formats and then transcribe them quickly. These large language models that we will hereafter call LLMs do a pretty good job of reading clear handwriting and you can use them when it The task is pretty simple and it can take maybe three to four minutes, but you want to reduce that time to 30 seconds. This is a good time to talk about some updates since I wrote a blog post about this topic. And as you've probably heard, artificial intelligence tools are changing rapidly all the time. Well, when I wrote this blog post, the paid version of ChatGPT was 4.0. And that was required in order to transcribe images because the free version, ChatGPT 3.5, didn't allow you to upload images to analyze. Well, after May 13th, 2024, the free version of ChatGPT is called ChatGPT 4.0 with a lowercase o, which stands for Omni. And that is free for all users. So now you don't need to have a paid version to do what we're talking about in this podcast episode with ChatGPT. And Claude by Anthropic, which is a break off of OpenAI, which makes ChatGPT. Claude is similar in its capabilities, but it had allowed free users to upload files. So some of the examples we'll talk about are from Claude and some are from ChatGPT. And It's great because now anyone can try this with just the free version on ChatGPT. While we're on this topic, let's just talk about what this new version of ChatGPT can do. It's ChatGPT 4.0, and it's supposedly even better than GPT-4, and it's available in the free tier, which is removing financial barriers for people and allowing more people to experiment and benefit from artificial intelligence tools, which is great. And That's something that Steve Little talked about in his blog post when this came out in May. So he has a great blog post about how ChatGPT 4.0 is a game changer for free AI access. And he also talks about a possible handwritten text recognition advance in ChatGPT 4.0. And so it's something exciting to experiment with. But he talks about how he tested the family search full text transcription of a deed and he transcribed the deed and then compared different versions of chat GPT and the family search transcription with his to see how many errors each one had. And he found that the new GPT 4.0 returned only nine errors while GPT 4 had 17 errors and family searches transcription had 22 errors. So It's exciting that these chatbots are getting better and better and are more able to help transcribe handwritten text. Before they were good at transcribing handwritten text, they've been good at transcribing printed text. So that's always something that you can do if you have a newspaper article or something that's just printed and you want it to be transcribed. That's a really easy option for you to get it transcribed. And that is ChatGPT 4.0. Wow. Thank you for leading us through the latest and greatest there. I think it's fascinating that FamilySearch had 22 errors, ChatGPT4 had 17, and GPT4.0 only had nine. Isn't that exciting that these chatbots are getting smarter and getting better? Right. It is really exciting. And one thing I forgot to say about the new GPT4 Omni is that it can reason across audio, vision, and text in real time. So it's supposed to be a lot faster and it can accept input in any combination of text, audio, image, and video. And it can generate any combination of text, audio, and image outputs. So it can do a lot 
and it can do a lot more than its competitors. And some people think that that's one of the reasons it got released in May was because of some other announcements by other competitors who are increasing their context windows like Google Gemini and um, allowing free users to do more things like Claude. So this definitely puts ChatGPT ahead of the competitors. (laughs) Competition is great in this circumstance. Well, let's talk a little bit about this idea of using the chatbot to work with your documents, because I think we have all seen documents that are multi-paged, you know, that 36 page pension application or 50 page estate file. And sometimes you look at all of that transcription and you just, oh, I think it's going to take me weeks to get through this. Well, this might be a good place to learn how to use AI. So document images that work well with LLMs that you might want to ask them to transcribe are typed text or a mix of typed and handwritten text. So often we see short documents like this, a marriage bond. And for example, you know, you'd have the boilerplate language already typed in there and then there would be a line where someone, the clerk usually had to fill out the appropriate information, date and names and such. We could also see this in a birth certificate, a bill of sale, like I mentioned, a pension application. Often those pensions will have just regular typed questions and then somebody is handwritten in all the answers. So in the blog post that Nicole wrote, there's an example of a document that you could try to transcribe with the help of ChatGPT. Now for O, and it's a parole document in a Confederate CMSR, so the Compiled Military Service Record, where some of the document is printed text and some is handwritten. The other cards in the CMSR were manually transcribed into the Airtable research log, but this was longer. And so having chat GPT to transcribe that can save so much time and can be so helpful. Yes, this was a compiled military service record for William T. Dyer. And each of the cards in that compiled military service record usually would just say like muster just a few dates and a few notes. So it wasn't very hard to just transcribe that quickly into my Airtable log. But because this one had a bunch of information typed out about the terms of being released as a prisoner of war and the parole and all that, I wanted to know what it said and to understand it. But I thought this might be a good chance to have these two paragraphs about that parole be transcribed by ChatGPT. So a lot of the time we can use artificial intelligence tools to just save us a few seconds here and there, but it can add up. And that's what Steve Little said a lot in our class, Empowering Genealogists with AI by the National Genealogical Society, that you know every time you can save just a few seconds here or there with artificial intelligence, over the course of a day, you're saving you know, more than just seconds. It adds up and you could save yourself 20 to 30 minutes or more. So that was kind of the goal here was to just save a few seconds, like instead of 60 seconds of me typing this out, it could take 15 seconds of working with ChatGPT. Well, before giving ChatGPT the job to transcribe the image, it helps to provide it with some context. So I already knew who the person was. And just in case ChatGPT can't read the name, I thought I would just tell it the name in the prompt. So this is the prompt I gave it. You are an expert genealogist, which that's something I usually use every time I'm doing genealogy and asking the chat bot to do something so that it activates the neural network that focuses on genealogy and has all of those boards ready. After telling it its role, then I said, transcribe this page from the Civil War Compiled Military Service Record of William T. Dyer from Hawkins County, Tennessee. It says W.T. Dyer, a fourth sergeant of Company D, 31st Regiment, Tennessee Volunteers, CSA, and is signed William T. Dyer. The paroling officer appears to be illegible, but could be N. Pullen of the 20th Regiment of Illinois Volunteers. So in my prompt, I kind of just gave it some of the info I could readily see. What I really wanted it to transcribe was all the paragraphs in the middle that were just kind of typed and easy to transcribe. And I knew it would struggle with some of the handwritten text because sometimes handwritten text is hard to read. 
providing some of that information is easy to do because I've already been looking at the compiled military service record and I know the name of the subject and I could guess at the name of the paroling officer. So that's what I did. So I could have just typed some of that basic info into my Airtable log, but I wanted to fully capture the essence of this document. And I thought it would be better to do that by having a full transcription rather than an abstract or a summary. And it actually would take me more time to try to make a summary of this document because I'd have to read the whole thing, understand it, and then condense it down to a summary. So that's why I wanted to transcribe the full thing. Well, that makes sense. And I think it's so great to think through the different uses and Different scenarios will warrant different ways of using the AI, but something we always have to remember is to fact check. And that's a very important next step in using these LLMs to compare the information from the generated transcription with the original. So in the parole document, the date at the top was transcribed as chat GPT as July 5th, but the document actually says July 9th. And the date at the bottom was transcribed as illegible, so you can prompt the chatbot to fix this and other things by saying the date at the top is July 9th, then at the bottom it's July 10th. Add quote n pullen quote in square brackets in the place of the illegible signature followed by 20th Regiment Illinois Volunteers Captain and Paroling Officer. And then when the transcription is done, you can copy and paste the fixed transcription into your research log. So Nicole, do you think it would be more work to tell the chatbot to fix that or just to fix it yourself when you're putting it into your research log? I definitely think it's faster to just tell the chatbot to fix it because it rewrites the whole thing correctly. So <laughs> it's less work for you to try to find it. You know, you can just sit back and watch it do the work. You're kind of like supervising your assistant. So you tell it to fix it. And then it also can remember things that you tell it to do. So by telling it to put an illegible name in square brackets, it's remembering that that's your preference and it can hopefully remember that for the future and learn from that. That's a great point. And I also wonder now that we have the option to just talk to it, you know, using audio, rather than type it out, you could just be reading through it and talk to it. I mean, that'll be fun to try. Yeah. And I've been using the audio option on the ChatGPT app and it's a great way to interact with the chatbot because it understands audio so well and can respond pretty easily to it. Great. Well, let's have a word from our sponsor, newspapers.com. Today's episode is sponsored by newspapers.com, your go-to resource for unlocking the stories of your ancestors. Dive into the newspapers where your family's history unfolds as you search nearly a billion pages in seconds. Newspapers.com offers an unparalleled treasure trove of historical newspapers, providing a window into the past. With papers from the 17th century to today, Newspapers.com is the largest online newspaper archive. It's a goldmine for anyone seeking to uncover stories from the past. Whether you're a seasoned genealogist or just starting your journey, newspapers.com makes it easy to search for obituaries, birth announcements, and the everyday stories that shaped your family. It's like having a time machine at your fingertips. And here's the best part. Our listeners get an exclusive offer. Use promo code FAMILYLOCKET for a 20% discount on your subscription. That's FAMILYLOCKET at newspapers.com. Sign up today at newspapers.com and embark on a journey of discovery. All right. Well, the transcription with ChatGPT went pretty well, even though it had a couple errors, but ultimately it saved me the time of those two paragraphs that I didn't want to transcribe myself. It just talked about how, you know, so-and-so is a prisoner of war in the hands of the United States forces in virtue of blah, 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 and Vicksburg and the garrison and this lieutenant general and all that. And it laid out, you know, the fact that he signs that he will not take up arms against the United States nor serve in any military police or constabulary force in any fort garrison or field work, et cetera. So all of those different stipulations, it transcribes that all perfectly. And so that was great. Well, now let's turn to another example. And this one is using Claude by Anthropic. And Claude is a large language model as well, just like ChatGPT. And you can go to it by going to Claude.ai. And in this example, I simply uploaded a marriage license. And the marriage license was from 1854 and was a mix of printed and handwritten text. 
And I asked the chatbot to play the role of an expert genealogist, then said, provide a transcription of this marriage record between William T. Dyer and Susan Webster. The clerk is James H. Vance. And one thing I found with the chatbots is that they do struggle with names because names are not as easy to figure out as words in a sentence that have context clues. So I usually just will read the names because I can, I usually know them already or can easily figure them out. The result was that Claude gave me a few key details instead of transcribing the image. And in that, it had a major hallucination. It added a made-up detail that William T. Dyer was the son of Susanna Dyer. However, it followed that little summary with the actual transcription. And in the actual transcription that it made, it gave the correct information and didn't add anything. So I thought that was really interesting that it decided to give some key details with something false in it, and then (laughs) it gave the correct full transcription. So you have to watch these chatbots because sometimes there will be details that sneak in that are incorrect. But it's just important, especially when we're first starting to use them, that we fact check everything and just be really careful. And maybe you can define hallucination for our listeners who are not familiar with that term. Something made up. And it happens (laughs) a lot with these large language models because they aren't human. They're just trying to predict the next tokens, the next parts of the sentence. And they are getting smarter and smarter. And the way that you can reduce the hallucinations is by giving them source information or text to work with and say, don't add anything to this. Just only use what I'm giving you. (laughs) (laughs) So that's one way to get less hallucinations and less errors, but it is important to know that the more that you use this, you'll see little errors because they just happen. So you got to be aware of that. Well, the transcription was really good. It starts with state of Tennessee, Hawkins County, to any regular minister of the gospel having the care of souls or any judge or justice of the peace of foresaid county greeting. James H. Vance, clerk of the county court for the county of Hawkins, sendeth greeting. You are hereby licensed and commanded by me to solemnize the rights of matrimony between William T. Dyer of Hawkins and Susan Webster by joining their hands together as husband and wife, given at office in Rogersville the 21st day of November. 1854 and of American independence, the 79th. I think it's so interesting that they were tracking the year of American independence. I'd love to see a study about when they quit doing that because I've seen that quite a bit in the 1800s. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So with the hallucination about adding in the name of Susanna Dyer, I told the chatbot, where did Susanna Dyer come from? The image doesn't say anything about William T. Dyer being the son of Susanna Dyer. But the actual transcription you made was pretty good. The justice of the piece was actually Branch Tucker. So I didn't finish reading it, but at the end it had James H. Vance clerk, which was correct. And then it had the date November the 23rd, 1854. This day the above couple was joined together as husband and wife by me. And then it had Burl Tucker JP. Well, when I looked at the name of the JP, it was Branch Tucker. So I basically I told it the two errors that I found and it said, you are right. My apologies. The marriage record does not mention William T. Dyer being the son of Susanna. I made an incorrect inference there. Mm -hmm. And thank you for catching that the JP's name is Branch Tucker, not Burl. I've updated the transcription and then it regenerated the transcription with those two things fixed. So I always do that. I like to teach it and have it fix it instead of editing it myself. I just think it's easier to tell it the errors and then have it regenerate it. Then I just copy and paste the final result into my research log. Okay, great. Let's talk a little bit now about using another tool called Snagit to transcribe newspaper articles. So what can you tell us about that? Well, in Steve Little's NGS course, Empowering Genealogists with AI, I learned about a tool that he uses called Snagit, and it's available at techsmith.com. This tool takes screenshots, and I'm sure a lot of people use it who are listening, but it takes screenshots. And then one of the cool features of of it is that it allows you to grab text from the image. So if you take a screenshot of a newspaper article, or if you take a screenshot of a page that has typed text, not handwritten, then it can grab the text. So this is not an AI tool, but it can use OCR to grab text from non-handwritten materials. And I have used it a bit over the last few months, and I really appreciate the ability to quickly grab text to paste into my research log. 
One thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't add nice line breaks or formatting like ChatGPT and Claude. Actually, what it does is it adds too many line breaks. I don't like the line breaks. I want it to just all flow correctly. One of the strengths of ChatGPT and Claude and these chatbots is their ability to format text nicely and use language well. So it does have that ability to smooth things out and make it look nice. So you have to kind of balance that with the problem of the hallucinations and the errors added in. Well, I found a newspaper article and took a screenshot of it with Snagit and then had it grab the text and it did a pretty good job, but it it does have a lot of errors in it actually. And you can see in the blog post that it has errors, you know, capitalization errors. Sometimes in those old newspapers, you'll see like some words are faded, they're on a fold line, you can't read it very well. And OCR really struggles with those. And so there's probably like 15 or 20 errors in this five paragraph newspaper article. When I put it into chat GPT, instead, it did a much better job and it didn't have any errors at all because this is one of the strengths of the chatbot is that it can predict what the next word is. So even if it has a hard time reading it, it can guess really well what the next word should be. So it did a lot better. So for example, in the last paragraph, it says Johnny Dunbar arrived yesterday with six runners and Mr. Cole of Pittsburgh, Kansas came in from Kansas with five horses. So ChatGPT got that perfect. And then snag it with OCR grabbing the text. It put Johnny spelled J C instead of J O because it couldn't read the O very well. So that was an error. And then instead of yesterday, it had broken yesterday across two lines. And so it had yes, space, comma, space, today. <laughs> so, and then instead of with, it had W-L-H because there was just a little faded spot there. The word wasn't easy to read. And then for Pittsburgh, it had an L instead of an I. So there were in that sentence, like four things that I would have had to fix manually. So it really works well for newspaper clippings where it's just printed text, but for whatever reason you want to put that into a Word document or something in your report and you just want a transcription of it, which I usually like to have for my research log, it's just a really convenient way to do it. So did you take the snippet and upload that or how did you do the specific getting the clipping into the chat GPT? Oh, great question. Yeah, I just took the screenshot and pasted it in. So that's one of the things that it's so easy and fast with ChatGPT is that you don't have to even upload it. You can just take a screenshot with Snagit or with your screenshot software on your computer. And then once you do that, usually it's in the clipboard for you to copy and paste. Mm -hmm. And so then I just go to ChatGPT and click in the little box where you message ChatGPT and I do control V to paste and then it's there. That's fabulous. That's so, it's, so great. <laughs> it's really fast. And that's one of the things I love about it is that it just takes away a lot of the steps for having to transcribe something. It, it really is fast. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, let's look at a couple more examples of transcription with ChatGPT. You know, hopefully this will give you some ideas for using ChatGPT and Claude to help make your transcription tasks more efficient. One of these examples, it was a marriage record, and the prompt was, you are an expert genealogist. Transcribe this marriage record for Richard Dyer and Hailey Couch. The bronzeman is William Everhart. The eyewitness was E.W. Hedrick. This was one of those records that has type text as well as fill in the blanks for the different people involved. So that came through fairly decent. And then the second example was an abstract from a Charles County will book. And this one was all typed and it had a lot of names in it. It said, you are an expert genealogist, transcribe this will abstract from the Charles County will book number 16. And looking at the image on Nicole's blog post, it looks like it did a fairly good job of getting all those names correct. And you know, typing names, if you're doing that yourself can be kind of a pain, but how nice to have it just do it for you. I noticed that for permilia instead it said pomolia so you know every once in a while get something a little off but this example really was pretty spot on with all the names having them all spelled correctly straight from that little clipping of the will book so that's fabulous <laughs> yeah. it did get 
Pamelia instead of Permelia. Uh-huh. And that's funny because that's not a name you ever hear anymore. But back when a lot of our ancestors lived in the South in Texas and Tennessee, we see that name all the time. <laughs> yeah. So at least it, we're like, well, that's obviously Permelia. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So funny. That just goes to show the experience of reading a lot of records and working with a lot of old time names. Yeah, I was going to say with that marriage record for Richard Dyer and Hailey Couch that it transcribed Hailey's name with H-I, even though in the record and in my prompt, I spelled it with the H-Y. So I was trying to like prevent it from spelling the names wrong by giving it the correct spelling in my prompt. And so I spelled it H-Y-L-E-Y. But then when it did the transcription, it still said, you know, the marriage has said Richard Dyer to Hailey, spelled with an I, and then with square brackets, Hailey spelled the Y. Oh, that's funny. So that was interesting. And it did follow my chosen convention of putting illegible things in brackets with a question mark. So it didn't really try to read the year. The year was completely legible. It was 1858. The eight was legible, but the printed part was 1858. 50 blank. And so then they had to fill in what year it was. So it was 185 blank. And then chat GPT just put it in question mark. Like, I'm not even going to try to read that year. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on, you can yeah, do this. That's funny. Yeah. So while it does save some time, it's not error free and we have to check it. Hopefully this was helpful to kind of see kind of where things are at. And all of these examples were done previously to the release of chat GPT 4.0. So in Steve Little's blog post, he shared some tentative information that the new 4.0 is a little better at this handwritten text recognition. So it's getting better, but it's not going to be perfect. We have to fact check, but I think it can save us time. And I think it's good to try it out, especially if you have these type of images that are mixed between type text and handwritten text, and you would like to have a full transcription for your research log or for your report. Yeah, and just to make it easy for you to read through it, sometimes it's just kind of difficult to read in the old typeface just because it's small. It, our eyes sometimes don't want to focus on it, at least mine don't. And so just to have it in normal type and you can make it as big as you want and you can read it and try to understand it because the whole value of doing this work is to get every detail out of these documents possible. And we just want to get the technical part out of the way so that we can then use it in our research. Save us some time in one place so we can spend more time on the analysis and using it. Absolutely. And checking for errors does help you analyze it more fully, you know, so it's It's kind of like rolling some of that analysis into the transcription piece. Exactly, because that is part of the value of doing a transcription yourself. And we have talked a lot about this, that there is value to reading every single word of a will or a deed to pick up on everything. And so this could just make it a little bit easier. And then we could do the fact checking to still get all of that internalized, all those details. Right. We don't want to give so much work to the chatbot that we aren't understanding the records anymore because we're not even looking at them. Right. Well, we just finished our Research Like a Pro with AI workshop, and if you would like to access those recordings, you can still purchase them on our website. So go ahead and go to our website to learn more, familylocket.com slash shop, and go to the artificial intelligence category to learn more about this workshop. You can have access to the recordings till the end of August. Well, we hope you have enjoyed listening to this podcast and we hope you are on the journey with Nicole and myself to discover more about how AI can help us in our genealogy. So thanks everyone for listening and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. We hope that something you heard today will help you make progress in your research. If you want to learn more, purchase our books, Research Like a Pro and Research Like a Pro with DNA on Amazon.com and other booksellers. You can also register for our online courses or study groups of the same names. Learn more at familylocket.com slash services. To share your progress and ask questions, join our private Facebook group by sending us your book receipt or joining our courses. To get updates in your email inbox each Monday, subscribe to our newsletter at familylocket.com slash newsletter. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. We read each review and are so thankful for them. We hope you'll start now to research like a pro.